Welcome back to the Truck Kings Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about enclosed trailers versus open style trailers like deck overs, car haulers, or those old school pipe trailers. Stick around to the end, we're going to give you our thoughts on which trailer we prefer and why. We'll go ahead and get into it. I have a very biased opinion on why I like what I like. So before I give it, we'll start with Doug. Because you've had, I've seen you go back and forth. You know, mm -hmm. you've had enclosed trailers uh, when, you, when you had your dad's. And then uh, now you have like a car hauler style trailer. Right. So what is your thoughts between the enclosed versus uh, open style? Well, the, the enclosed is nice because you can, you know, you load your stuff in there, you throw a padlock on it, and you don't worry about somebody coming and taking all your stuff. Yeah. For, for me, I'm not so concerned about somebody taking my Razor when it's parked at a hotel, like you know, on the way to somewhere to, to go ride. But it's more like, you know, I'll put coolers in the back or I put helmets in the seats and that kind of stuff. And so it's more I'm worried about somebody walking by and saying, oh, oh you know, use a Yeti yeah, cooler easy or five whatever. Discount, yeah. yeah. So that's the nice part about the enclosed trailer. Um, versus the, the open side. Everything's in there. It's dry when yeah. you get there. Like in West Virginia, we showed up and it, we drove through, I don't know, it seemed like days worth of rain in that last hour. Uh, and when we got there, it, uh, you okay? Yeah, you're good. Sorry. <laughs> you can't be taller than me. <laughs> when, when we got to West Virginia. <laughs> No, my eyes were looking at your mouth. I'm like, nope, I ain't, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do this it. Is a, I can't look weird. I'm actually taller than you in real yeah, life. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, he's not. It, uh, <laughs> but no, when, when we got to West Virginia, it was everything was soaking wet. Yeah. And, and I had an open trailer then, and that means that the razor was soaking wet. wet. So the yeah. nice clothes I wore to get there, we, I had to go change. So you know, the enclosed part, that's that's what's really nice about it. And then on the open side, it's I think it's a little easier to get. Well, let me touch base on enclosed. I, I, what I'm hearing you say, and and I do agree with that. Uh, I can't say this without giving away my opinion, but uh, the the biggest benefit is to enclose is the simplicity of loading up. Right. Like you don't have to anything to worry about. Obviously, someone can cut the lock on the trailer right. and take all your stuff out. We're not saying that. You know, you know, honest a lock just keeps honest people away. You know, at the end of the day, if someone has harm and bad intent, they're going to do what they're going to do, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but that's what I, I love about enclosed trailers is like, you can just leave everything in it. Yeah. And then load it up and yeah. then unload it when you get there. You don't have to worry about making sure it's locked down and think through things like that. Like, how can I make this difficult for someone to uh, walk away with it in the well, event it's on the open? It, and there's almost no limit to what you can load. If you want yeah. to say, oh, think about taking that. Okay, well, they just throw it in the trailer. I mean, there's plenty exactly. of stuff. There. You don't have to worry yeah. about it falling off when you're going down the road or something like True. that. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to that um, on the open, on the closed, enclosed trailer. Um, I think though, when it comes to open trailers, though, it just ease of loading the actual machines. Yeah. So when we bought the Razor 200, it won't fit, you know, long ways. We have to put yeah. it on the side. Well, I can't do that in an enclosed trailer. True. So I'm, I'm hamstrung by not being able to do that. So <clears throat> those are. Those are some of the benefits I see to both, um, and it's a little easier to pull that too. So, so I guess that would be the con of the enclosed trailer. You're saying that's always been my issue with enclosed <coughs> trailers, and I've never just straight up had like a box trailer, but we had a uh, toy hauler camper mm -hmm. bumper pull, which most enclosed trailers, unless you're going to spend like eighty to a hundred thousand dollars, are going to be bumper pull mm -hmm. trailers, right? Right. Uh, <clears throat> and this was a triple axle, triple axle uh, bumper pull uh, toy hauler, and so we put the machine inside. And it was the same concept as an enclosed trailer, where you just you're able just to just throw everything on the floor and don't have to worry about it. Yeah. The problem is like, man, it's just like it was a big old kite behind me, yeah. and the wind loved to push it around right. all over the road, no matter how big of a vehicle I was driving, I could always feel it back there. Well, and I think that's the key is is to the size of the trailer, right? Because the the trailer we brought to South Carolina 
was uh, it's eight feet inside. The ceiling was eight feet tall. Wow. So that was like pulling a sailboat with the, the mast up, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that was and that was behind an F-250, so it wasn't a huge deal. But if you're driving a motorhome or something like that, you almost don't have to worry about that side of it. Because yeah, it's got enough, What you're enough driving's front. bigger yeah. than what you're pulling. Yeah, much bigger. <clears> so. so that's always been my you know drawback on enclosed trailers. So if you're thinking about getting an open style trailer versus enclosed, think that through. What type of vehicle do you drive? When we pulled that camper, we had a 2500 Dodge and it, it still moved it around. Now we drive a F450 now, yeah. dually. I don't know if I'd have that same experience, but our next restriction with enclosed trailers is the amount of, the volume of vehicles we have to bring mm -hmm. for my family. Because yeah. now we're at a stage where everybody wants to drive. Yeah. And we got six people in your family, that becomes more of a burden. Um, yeah when you're trying to travel across the country and so uh and i've heavily looked at the gooseneck uh enclosed trailers but now we're talking about we're not talking about ten thousand yeah, dollars yeah we're talking there. about expensive and and it not being even a camper now you can get the ones with campers but then you're taking away floor right. space and yeah. so <laughs> you know it's just one way having a dozen another yeah. you know to get to the point uh, but like what you're talking about with open trailers, you know, the drawback to them, which is a positive for enclosed, the drawback to them is you are exposed to the elements, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can load all your stuff up there. And then it depends like, you know, if it's a bumper pull, you have your bed like you had mm -hmm. to be able to cover your stuff up if you have a bed cover. Uh, if it's a gooseneck like what I had, uh, you don't have a bed cover. So then you got to get creative or it will get rained on. And I guarantee you, well, at least from my experience, it always gets rained mm -hmm. on. Yeah. And yeah. we've had that happen yeah. going into one of, uh, back when we went to Brimstone, I think 2019, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we had that happen. We're in an open trailer. We're going there. We usually stop about halfway on those 12 hour trips, uh, pour down raining. And the stuff we had in the machines were all uh, supplies. We like to buy all of our stuff before we leave. Uh, and so it, it, it wasn't detrimental to us, but uh, just inconvenient, right. I guess a better way to put it, and, yeah. and learned. We had a box on the gooseneck, but it just was one of those job boxes, and we couldn't fit everything in there, and that was one of the other problems. Yeah. Uh, so everybody's just like, well, throw a job box on it. Well, it's not a bad idea, but when you got six people in your family like we do, that's not always going to fix the problem right. uh, with the volume of stuff you got to bring. Yeah. So. Well, and we we had the same problem in um, in West Virginia coming back when we ended up buying the Razor, yeah. the two hundred, and uh, we had the other two four wheelers had to go. Well, we had the, we had an open trailer. We had my truck bed, which is what we put all of our stuff in under a cover. Yeah. Well, as soon as we put the four wheelers in there, so now you had a cover. cover yeah, yeah. So then we you know it's putting suitcases in the Razor and all that stuff and so then everything's going to get wet and you're put, putting stuff in garbage bags so yeah. it had been really convenient to just you know throw it in the enclosed trailer and lock the door and yeah. we're done didn't really matter so <clears throat> so if you're, if you're trying to decide which way to go that's what this podcast is for is kind of give you all the pros and cons all the things we've thought about where you don't go waste you know 15 20 000 on an enclosed trailer and realize like oh crap yeah it sucks to pull <laughs> for one thing so now you're not driving the speed limit 75, 80 on the interstate. Now you're driving 55, which is going to take you longer to get there. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, trying to make this as convenient of an experience to do this hobby. So when we get there, it's still an enjoyable thing. <laughs> you're not, you know, <clears throat> just cussing and kicking and yeah, pissed exactly, off, you yeah. know, that you're miserable. Yeah. Uh, one thing, I'll get into my point. I, I lean and have always leaned to to an open style trailer. We bought a deck over back in 2015, I want to say, uh, when we still have that today. So that deck over is eight years old now. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's went through its own, <clears throat> uh, I guess it's transitioned into different styles. We started with this deck over uh, and then we had problems with storing our stuff. And so then we added the job box on there uh, and that was probably the second, I would say, uh, evolution of the trailer. And it was fine for the short trips, mm -hmm. but then we went, you know, 2019, we went to uh, Brimstone and all that stuff got wet. 
there we go. I'm back to square one on this is not ideal, right? Like <clears throat> I can make it work, but I'm not a big fan of taking everything out of the machines to put in the truck when we stop at a hotel at night. Right. And so um, my third evolution of the trailer is I had a custom box built on the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'll never forget is when this guy was building the box, uh, this was the first job I went to him with. Uh, and it the box is big enough you could fit bodies in the box. Oh, yeah. it's big. So he's just like, what are you <laughs> transporting in this box? Like it's none of your business. Sir. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Don't ask any questions. This is a secret project, <clears throat> sir. Uh, and so, but what it allowed us to do is those uh, 17 gallon totes. Uh, we built it big enough to where 10 can fit in there, and I went with 17 gallons because it was still they're big enough to you know, put adequate stuff in, but they're small enough for my kids to carry them. Right. And so, uh, and and that measurement on how wide they are fit the distance of, of the trailer. So, and then it also allows room on the bottom to put uh, all of our suitcases on top of the totes because mm -hmm. it's two levels in there. Uh, <clears throat> and then these doors lock. I got uh, vent doors, smaller ones that we can open up. So if it's really hot outside, it can have airflow through it. Uh, now, if you have the funds to build a buy trailer and you're trying to compare against enclosed or open, you know, the difference of when I was shopping them, I want to say enclosed were, you know, 10 to 11,000. That open at Gooseneck, it's a 30 foot, it's a 25 five. So 25 on the deck, five mm -hmm. on the dove. Uh, I think it was like six or seven thousand. So that difference to build that box is essentially is my enclosed area where I can just throw stuff in right. and I have to worry about it getting wet. Uh, so that might be something you think about. Now you need to make sure you got enough length on the trailer because I mean this thing is uh, three foot wide. Uh, then the width of the trailer, I guess the length of the trailer. Uh, it's as long as the width of the trailer, right. the better way to put it. Yeah. And then it is, it, is, it is as high as the neck of the trailer. And so that allowed me to also put a parking spot up there for a youth machine, uh, which we use on, on our long trip. So uh, to me, the, the form the trailer is in now has probably been one of its best forms uh, because we have the best of both worlds. now. Our machines get wet and dirty when we travel. Uh, that necessarily doesn't bother me. And, you know, outside of just someone being a real dick and putting something <laughs> in the gas tank, there's nothing else you can really do to the machines. Right. You know, uh, unless there's unbolting parts or whatever, right? right? Stealing like, parts or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. There's nothing they're going <laughs> to walk away with uh, that, we're, that we've thrown in it because that box is so big. So, uh, I lean towards the deck overs because I don't want to be restricted about how fast I can go. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about ease the load up. When it's a deck over, you don't have to worry about any fender wells. No. You literally are able, you're, you're strapping your machine at chest level uh, every time. Yeah. Uh, in which we have a video on like how I strap our machines down. So I'll link that in the description of this video. So if you're wondering, you know, how that, what that looks like, you know, you can take a look at that video too. But uh, for me, all those things I took in consideration uh, and just through the years of experience before that deck over I had a 18 foot car hauler and that wasn't a bad deal. It was similar. You're, you know, you're strapping down a little lower, um, but same concept. But mm -hmm. since I went to that deck over, you know, outside of us getting one of those, uh, you know, mini five stack car haulers <laughs> with the hydraulic back end. <laughs> Because the amount of machines we yeah, got to bring, right, yeah. uh, you know, I don't, I don't think we'll have another version of the trailer we have. You know, it's just no yeah. need. Because I think I can even the next step could be, I convert that top area into to fit a full size yeah. machine. And now I'm hauling three machines. Right now we haul, we haul two machines and two youth machines, and we can bring our youth four-wheeler on the back of the truck so you know we were hauling five machines when we go now we're maxed out at that there's no more yeah there's no more going on on right. top of that but 
Uh, so those are all the benefits when, you know, years of doing this, uh, you know, bef not having a professional crew before to haul our stuff down there. Uh, you know, we had a budget like everybody else, and we just kind of <laughs> built this thing. Uh, and to me, it's the perfect way to transport because, you know, we don't have any – we don't feel any wind now. Obviously, I'm hauling with the F450, but I hauled that same gooseneck with that 2500 Dodge. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Yeah. You know, it just pulls so smooth that trailer because you you don't feel that wind resistance when it pushes. Yeah. You know? no, that's that's a big thing. Like when we left for South Carolina, pulling that enclosed the tall enclosed trailer, it was you you felt it. <laughs> Somebody just pushing the back of your truck, pushing it around. You think I don't know if this is a good idea. But, We'll figure out over the next 13 hours. <laughs> we made it. It, 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 did, it did just fine, but it is uncomfortable when you're when you're not used to that. But um, yeah, it it's it, they both have their benefits. But I'm I'm with you. Uh, my preference right now is open trailer, um, just from the loading part of it. You know, you don't have to get between the walls. If you're like me. You know, I'm not I'm not yeah. very tall, but I'm not very narrow. The older you get, so the less that that's you, fun. <laughs> you, you kind of have to lean down in the walls and try to strap things underneath the buggy yeah. and all that, so you can stand yeah. outside of it. So. And that's so that's I'm I'm there right about now. So nice. we'll see how how it goes as we as the kids get older. And all so that. you, <clears throat> so you're saying, you liked enclosed, but you're more open now. Yeah. So I, I, all the things I said about the enclosed are true, and those are really big conveniences. However, when it comes to loading it, unloading it, that kind of stuff, it's just so much easier. And you can bring a smaller trailer, a shorter trailer, because you can load from the side. So a oh, yeah. six foot razor is now four feet wide, like the boys. Yeah, yeah. So it, you know, you gain, you can get a little easier to get in and out of parking spots and that kind of stuff. So right now, that's where I'm at. <clears throat> but we'll never need, uh, knock on metal, we'll never need five machines. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get back to the enclosed. I don't know. I, I don't think know. your wife's going <clears> to <throat> want to start driving eventually. And yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if that happens or not. But. Yeah, All right, well, those are our thoughts on enclosed trailers versus an open-style trailer. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you haul uh, and, and why? You know, so if someone's coming across this video to help them make a decision, they can hear from, from you all also. So we appreciate you watching, and until next time, stay safe on the trails.